Soto Nerds of Color, and I am so thrilled to be talking to you about this movie. You were absolutely fantastic in it. Thank you for Oh, uh, thank you. So kind of. Of course. So to start off, I have to ask you, what was your reaction to the script? And then what was it that intrigued you about this character? You do such a great job with it. Well, you know, I, I read a lot of scripts and a lot of them are garbage. And this was one that I did. It was a page turner, first of all. I know that's a good feeling when I want to get to the next page to get to the end because I want to know what happened to this family and what happened to my character. And also I was laughing out loud because this movie is, it's unconventional, it's original, especially now with Hollywood making so many remakes and sequels. This feels so fresh because it's so violent, so gory, so funny. And at the same time, you're, you're moved. I was very moved at the end, maybe because I'm, the son of divorced parents that it hit me a little harder, but I don't know, go figure. And you know what, I do want to talk to you about that because I, I had the pleasure of speaking with David as well. When we were talking about the meaning, I think it's so beautiful that in an action thriller like this, you can have such a beautiful message. Is there something you personally took away from it? I know you said you were moved and I was moved watching it as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I laughed so hard in the movie and, and the action was also funny, but at the same time, horrific. But, but the message is beautiful to believe. I mean, to be able to believe in, in things and in in miracles and in magic and, and to believe that things can be better, you know, that the best is yet to come. I mean, those are important feelings that you have to nurture in yourself to, to keep going. I have to talk to you about playing the villain. I have to imagine that's so much fun. I mean, I know playing the hero is awesome, but I feel like playing the villain is just such a treat. Oh my especially... gosh, the villains are the best roles. I know, right? the roles in Hollywood, all the great actors have been villains. Yeah. It's, it's, you get to chew up scenery, you get to have tantrums, you get to rage and people think you're acting, you're just letting off steam. <laughs> I feel like some of my favorite performances are villains. And then you're playing a villain against Santa Claus. Like, come on, what what is that like? It's scary. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna go from the most beloved character, Bruno Nicanto, to the most hated, Kid, uh, guy, a villain by kids. You know, how are you gonna explain to kids that this guy tried to kill Santa? It's not gonna be a good look for me. I mean, they hate me that I did my job right. Oh, I have to also talk about the fight scenes. I loved those. What was it like to prepare for those and then not only do them, but then see them translate on screen because filming it is one thing, but seeing yeah. it all put together, I imagine it's magical. Well, you know, I'm, I'm working with the greatest stunt coordinator in the history of movies, David Leach, who who did Matrix, who did 300, who did John Wick 1, directed me in John Wick 1. And that's where we struck up our relationship. And and so Jojo Osebio was the person he hired to train me. And he was very patient. A month before the movie, I got there to Winnipeg, uh, minus 35 degrees. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I spent a lot of time indoors training and, and they were patient because the last fight, the biggest fight I have is 50 moves. That's the more moves than I ever had in, in my entire life. Do you have a favorite filming memory that sort of stands out from the experience? Yeah, I mean, there was a moment I'm holding the family hostage. I do a home invasion because I'm a disgruntled employee. And uh, we were all improvising. And you have Edie Patterson. You have Alex Hassel. Alex, La everybody was so funny that we would start cracking each other up and ruin the take. And then sometimes we'd be improvising and Tommy, we're called director, would be laughing from, from Video Village and ruin a take. That was the best. When the director I, would say because he's laughing out loud, got to love that. I love that you got to do improv on this. I always love hearing that because it, you get to add yourself a little bit to the character. Can you tell me one of your favorite moments you improv or a favorite line that you were really excited to see made the final cut? Yeah, you know, I sang the Violent Night song. I came up with that and uh, I'm so glad that it stayed because I'm all off pitch and, <laughs> and off key. So I'm glad that it made it regardless of that. Is there something you either learned from yourself doing the project or someone on set working the project that you feel like you're gonna take with you almost on you know, future work? Yeah, well, you know, David is, is a very method actor, you know, and I always respected that. You know, he's, he's Santa Claus 24 uh, seven, but he lets, it go on, he lets it go on the weekends, which I like, <laughs> I like that. You know, you, you can be method on set and then when you're on the weekends, you let it go. 
what was it like seeing the reaction to the trailer to the premise of this movie from the fans? I mean, when it came out, the internet went wild. What is that oh, like? I, I mean, I saw it at premiere at Comic Con New York City, four thousand. There, biggest premiere. You were there. Yes. Four thousand people. I've never been with so many people at a at a screening, and they were laughing and screaming, and of course rooting for Santa. I was a little bitter. But I guess I understand. I mean, and then when my, you know, my eventual um, comeuppance, they jumped to their feet and I was like, oh God, damn it. <laughs> that has to be such a surreal experience. I love it's going true. to there, but I can't imagine getting I to- I think it's one of the best death scenes, if I may say so myself. Yes. Yeah. What was it like filming that? Because we are going to release this after, you know, it yeah. aired, so yeah. we can- well, that fight sequence was crazy, man. It took me a month to 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 prepare for that. Yeah. And you know, David Harbour gained 300 pounds to play Santa and he's six foot five already. So I asked the stunt guy, please make me look better than him. And, you know, I got to look like an assassin. And this guy, David was really good at the fight sequences. So I was a little nervous. And we shot, you know, it was like minus 20 that day. And we shot at 2 a.m. in the morning. I The next day, I could not get out of bed without assistance. Oh my gosh. Lastly, before I let you go, I have to talk to you about the genre really quick. I mean, action, thriller, holiday, you're mixing so many amazing things yes. together. What is that like for you as an actor to do? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a very difficult tone to, to maintain, especially for the actors and the director. You know, how do you keep this tone of, it's still gotta be funny, but you I gotta still keep the danger going. Cause if, if, if you think I'm a clown, then you, you lose the danger and there's no more, th that thrill is gone. So I had to maintain that that edge, that razor's edge of sort of trying to be funny but witty, not not clownish, and and the danger, so that the audience didn't need to like me, but they needed to respect me. John, I had the best time speaking with you. I was a fan coming in, and I'm a bigger fan going out. So thank okay. you so much for your time today. When I would ask. Maybe a nerd who's just like you Talking about the things that you like too So I invite you to the NOC